And we are back with another episode of the Hockey Princess Podcast. I am your host, the Hockey Princess. We have crossed the old guy. Um, let's get into it. Got a mixed bag today. Just as a reminder, make sure to hit that like and subscribe on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube, however you watch or listen to us ramble on a weekly basis. If you have any questions, comments, guys, now is the time of year to send in your questions so we can explain things because it's a very long off season, friends. And we've got the time because whether there's hockey or not, we're still going to talk about hockey. Um, let's get into it. We've got a couple of signings in the NHL world, a couple of signings in the Chicago world. Um, in the NHL world, uh, you've got Martin Nietzsche finally making a decision, uh, re-signing with Carolina Hurricanes. As you remember, you know, there were rumors and rumblings of Nietzsche wanting out of Carolina, Carolina not really wanting to re-sign him, Nietzsche wanting elsewhere. Well, as Krusty said a couple of minutes ago before we started recording, he just is kind of stuck there and Caroline is kind of stuck with him. Uh, there were def definitely rumors and rumblings of, you know, maybe him potentially going to Buffalo. Winnipeg was a main one um, with a, you know, Carolina getting Rutger McGroarty and other pieces in said trade. Um, but it didn't happen. He just is still in Carolina. Yeah, as I stated, he wouldn't be going anywhere, and he didn't. Um, I like to be right all the time. I do like to be right, but that that whole thing was contingent on Getzel. If Getzel resigns with the Hurricanes, then yes, they probably would have moved Nacious, no problem. Um, but once Getzel didn't sign and Table left, <coughs> well. Now you're in a deep hole. You 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 need to have him. He was yeah. complaining about his playing time. He wanted to be on number one power play. Well, now you'll get it. He should get it. I don't know. I mean, the number one power play, you've got Aho. Yeah, I would assume you have Jarvis. I would Jarvis. assume you have, you have Shvetsnikov. So maybe you're the last one in the group. Or maybe they still want to spread it out and have two adequate power plays. So, which wouldn't be a horrible thing. No, um, he's got two years now to lose kind of the, uh, I guess the best way to put it, reputation that he's gotten as being maybe just a little too soft when money time comes around. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, additional Carolina Hurricanes news. Uh, it was came out today. Eric Saul did a one day signing so that he could retire a Carolina Hurricane. Um, for those who are new to the hockey world, the Stahl brothers have been around, gosh, probably as long as I have. Um, there's Jordan, there's Eric, there's Mark. Um, Eric Stahl was with the Carolina Hurricanes for a very, very long time. Um, a huge staple in the Carolina Hurricanes history. Um, this is a thing that teams sometimes do for players um, where they sign them for one day so they can retire with the team that they were with for a considerable portion of their career. Um, and so nice move on the Carolina Hurricanes to do that for him. Yeah, so I'm waiting for our one-day contract for Brent Seabrook, Duncan Keith. Doesn't Seabrook, I mean, doesn't he technically still have a contract under Vancouver, or is it done now? I believe Seabrook's was under Tampa Bay, and I believe it is, he is in our UFA. I believe last year was the last year. So. Well, Kyle won't make that happen. No, I don't think it's anything they want to discuss this year. So, um, you know, maybe next year. But uh, good on Carolina. Yeah, Eric was a huge part of that franchise. I um, believe he was there for their only cup win. Yeah. I think so. You know, he was much younger. Yeah. Um, we've got two Chicago Blackhawks signings. Um. So going into free agency, 
Kyle only gave two qualifying offers to all of the free agents. That was your Louis Crevier and your Isaac Phillips. Um, everybody else was kind of let go, which is what we predicted. Um, and so finally got the contracts hashed out with uh, Louis Crevier and Isaac Phillips. Both of them are set to a one-year 775K two-way contract. Um, you know, I figure Crevier is still in the AHL playing with Rockford. I figure Isaac, what I want for him and what I figure is going to happen are two different things. Um, as most people know, I'm a big Isaac Phillips fan. I would like to see him up in Chicago a bit more. I think we do have the space for it if Kevin goes to Rockford. Um, but I do think he'll still spend quite a bit of time down in Rockford. Or uh, Isaac, not Kevin. Um, but I think that also benefits, you know, not only the, you know, you got your Allen and EDM, who is your second year in Rockford, but also guys like Artie and other defensemen, who is their first year in Rockford. Yeah. I think he's a great veteran leader of guys that aren't solely having only played in the AHL their whole season or whole career. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't think it's any given whatsoever that core goes to Rockford, but um, I would consider that maybe a 15% chance at the end of the day. Um, as far as Isaac, um, you know, as you stated, we're both Isaac fans. Um, I'd certainly like to see him be, you know, if somebody does get injured, that he is the first guy to get called up and not the third. Yeah, um, I I believe their game plan is uh, Isaac might even start up with the big club. Um, he might not see the ice though. Um, I think he's making that big boy money. <laughs> huh? But well, his that. no his. His and Creature's amount of money is going to be the same now. That's the two-way contract. That's the beauty of the two-way contract is they get 775 no matter where they play. So for either of them, it works out really well for somebody, especially like Creature, who's 23 years old. They're not going to be <clears throat> really ass hurt if they got to go back to Rockford. <clears throat> if you're paying them, three quarters of a million dollars, they're okay with it. So, you know, that, that ends nice. So both of them will be getting their money. I just believe the Hawks have moved on probably from both of them. And they figure they don't have a problem with either of them being up with the big club in watching from the press box. Where Nolan Allen, EDM, and... uh you know, Artie, you don't want them coming up and then not getting minutes. Right. So you'd much rather have them down in Rockford getting their minutes. So it's a way to reward them for being a team player, the two way. Yeah. And, you know, they also know their role. And their role is they might be watching from the press box if they're with the big club and they have a leadership job down in Rockford. Yeah. And one, I also definitely think down in Rockford, it helps, especially like the younger guys like Artie, where, you know, if they're not perfect right at the get go, which also I don't expect them to, they're all kids, you know, you, they have con Rockford has confidence in Crevier and in Isaac to eat up quite a bit of minutes of game time and take a little bit of pressure off of the younger kids every game because i mean it's a long season well yeah and um i mean uh, the ahl is pretty rough and tumble so um you know you have two bigger boys that can kind of be there to protect the young ones a little bit yeah um and um stir things up when they need to so the young kids don't figure they got to do everything and then they have to fight every battle these guys will be seasoned enough to know that they can step in right away um, plus, with Creature and Artie down in Rockford, that locker room, I would assume, will not be boring whatsoever. Oh. Um, 
I would assume there won't be a lot of pressure on anybody playing because I have a feeling um, that locker room is going to be one good time. So um, October you know, 12th, can't wait. Again, as you know, we talked about um, this is kind of the route for those two defensemen. You know, I'm hoping for more for Isaac, but, you know, he might be a tweener just like a, a lot of young, a lot of defensemen. Um, let's see. Uh, other Chicago Blackhawk news, prospect news. We mentioned him a little bit last week. Uh, Ryan Green still playing in Boston uh, in college. Uh, has been awarded the C. There's three C's for that team uh, this season, and he is one of them. Um, so as, you know, we kind of talked about last week, you know, we don't have an exact, you know, idea in terms of where he could fit in potentially, you know, in the lineup with the rest of the prospect kids. But, you know, going back for another year, Krusty and I figured that you'd see certainly more of him, um, especially now that Macklin Celebrini is not returning back to Boston this season for school. Um, but you will also, with the captaincy, definitely see more of him on the ice and see him take more of a leadership role in the locker room, which I certainly also think uh, Kyle really likes to see because he really likes the captain kids. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a ton of young kids that are all wearing a C. So, um, yeah, good for him. Um, it should be a fun uh, college year. I would assume this will be his last. Got anything else on the, the news? Uh, the only other thing we could uh, touch on, I guess, is maybe uh, a tiny bit of Oliver Moore's play in the showcase. In the beauty league. Uh, oh, no, no, was, not in okay. that league. I've, okay, guys, sorry. I've been watching him in the beauty league, and it's been great. Crusty old guy's been making fun of me for watching hockey in bringing a Dinah. Um, yeah, you want to touch on his performance in the showcase? Um, yeah, um, in the showcase, we've got a uh, sweet first. Thing. Why don't you explain what the showcase is? Like, who are these kids? Uh, the showcase is a junior showcase. You're basically looking at most kids that will be making your, um, you know, world juniors team. Um, except you know, the U.S. has two teams, I believe Canada has two teams, Finland has one, Sweden has one. Um, it's not considered a tournament or anything. It's more of just the showcase. They all get together a little bit before the season. It, it has importance because it's a way to them to start to judge where they want their world junior team to look like. Mm -hmm. um, so, and the other good point with that is uh, Oliver Moore is playing second line center. You know, there's always talk, nays are more, everybody, will they be a center? Um, you know, it's it's starting to look more and more like Oliver Moore can be a center. He can be a second-line center. I choose to believe, and maybe I'm riding the delusional train, but it certainly won't wouldn't be the first time, and it won't be the last. I am fully on the delusional train that Oliver Moore will be a center. I will have my Kyle Davidson moment. Not completely, but we're pretty close. I think out of the prospects that aren't already just like a guaranteed <laughs> centerman, I think he's definitely closer to that than most. Yeah, and again, uh, a lot of people like to indicate, okay, as a centerman, it's all about your face-off percentage. I'm here to tell your listeners, uh, that's a big stat that everybody throws out at the end of the day isn't all that important. Look at Nate McKinnon's face-off dot record um but they have to be able to play strong defense they're going to need to deal with bigger people so that's why a lot of people play center and juniors and then all of a sudden come up to the nhl and you have to lug around chasing after kopitar all the time it's a tall ask for somebody if they're not if they don't have decent size so um but no, um, so far everything's pointing up. Oliver Moore with a goal, I know. I think they played today also. I don't know the results. Um, but that's what that is. That's just a, a tiny tourney. Kind of uh, it'll gauge them for their exact world junior lineup. 
which we know we all kind of enjoy a little after Christmas. You get to watch some more prospects and everything else play. Hopefully by then we're not sick and tired of the Blackhawks and really salivating over this, but we'll see. So I just wanted to throw out a little bone to Oliver. We love Oliver here. Um, all right. Well, that is our news for the week. Until uh, do you want you you don't want to go after the runner up for the Calder? Your Brock. He, looked, he got extended. Like what? He got ex eight years for eight point five. That is some huge coin. Yeah, did we think he was getting anything less? Is the question? No, I don't know. He's had one good season, so um, you know. What? What it other money be is Minnesota spending on is the question. Like, that's your golden boy. You really don't – you have prospects, but you don't have one that is that treasured that you're like, we need to take care of him completely. No, everybody else has been taken care of. curl has been taken care of for a little while. And, um, you know, they've got a phenomenal player in, in Baldy. So, um. You know, they're getting there. They have one more year in cap hell. I believe they have 14 mil on the books for Parise and Suter still. And then that buyout will be a lot less. Like, it's like three or four million for each of them for the remainder of the time. So, um, yeah, I was I was a little surprised at the money. Um, I think he's a really good player, but, you know, it all it takes – is a bad wheel that you fully don't recover from. And if you're an offensive defenseman, you are all of a sudden average or below average. So it, it, there's a huge risk factor in there. We've also got, you know, everybody going, well, look at fast plastic contract. That's so much more of a value, blah, blah. Faber could be a defining top five offensive defenseman, which as much as we like the pickle, the pickle will not be. So. I think that's all. That was the only other one I wanted to talk about. Hello, Rutu. Yeah, I'm done. It really surprised me. Um, I think I'm now just at the point. Maybe it's just a lot of free agent stuff that's happened where the there really isn't contra like the money side. I'm just like, yeah. It seems like every team has a couple of just obscene contracts these days. Um, but it but it also kind of makes sense to me, like you said. The ones that they do need to take care of have already been taken care of. Brock Faber is set to be Minnesota's golden boy. Um, and so they need to take care of him completely. Is a little bit ridiculous, yes, but... I, I don't think there's an NHL team that doesn't have a ridiculous contract on the book. It's kind of just what the NHL is. Yeah, um, it, it's definitely where they're going. If you've got a premier talent after their entry-level contract, they want the eight years. Um, You want to give them money. You have that fear if you only do four years that the cap's going to go up a lot. And if their play continues, now you're going to, for that other four years, you, you'll be paying them an arm and a leg. And it works out great for Brock Fiverr because he's 29 when the contract ends. Still got enough time to get one more huge one. So there, we've spent way too much time on him. All right. All right. So we are going to, for the next four weeks, do our predictions. Uh, we're just going to do one division each week uh, because we tend to talk a lot and there's other things that we have to talk about. So this episode is going to be week one in terms of our predictions. We'll do a division every week. This week, we're doing Atlantic division predictions. Um, before we get started and in no particular order, I am just going to refresh for people who maybe not, do not have the Atlantic division memorized. And when we get a sponsor and like some intern and some software, you'll see a huge graphic just go whoosh. Or maybe not. Carry on, Hockey Princess. All right. In no particular order, the Atlantic Division is you've got Tampa, Detroit, Florida, Buffalo, 
Boston, Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa, if I didn't say Ottawa. Um, so that is your Atlantic. So do you want to go from our predictions for number one or number two? Or not, sorry, not number two. Number one or go from eight up? Let's start at the bottom. Okay. And then we'll be here, just like Drake says. Mm -hmm. Um, sure. I'm ready whenever you are. Um, as I was telling Chris, the old guy, I was looking up the, the end of last season standings for this division. I really don't see it changing all that much, uh, for this upcoming season. Um, I'm, I'm number eight, unfortunately, because they're definitely one of my favorites. I have the Montreal Canadiens. I am with you on eight. Um, I think, I do think Ottawa is, Ottawa is my, or I do think Ottawa is pretty far down there. So at the end of last season, it was Montreal was last and Ottawa was first. I do think Montreal has, you know, gotten some key pieces. Some other guys are coming. You've got Lane Hudson make, potentially making the jump to Montreal this year. I think the Montreal Canadiens are a prime example of, yes, you have these key pieces, you are developing, you are progressing, but guess what? So is everyone else in your division. You are starting from way further down on the bottom and yeah, you're progressing, but guess what? So is Ottawa. So is Buffalo. So is Detroit. Everybody else is getting better too. Yep. Which, you know, we're trying to explain to the fan base that, um, you know, just because all of a sudden you get a couple pieces, you don't leapfrog over a lot of teams. Oh, um, no, no, no. Yeah, I've got Montreal at the bottom. Um, Their biggest – whoa, I got two dogs out here. Their biggest thing is um, what does Kirby look like Um, probably? That, That's huge. Um, That is one torn up knee. Um, if Kirby can come back and be a serviceable third line centerman, it'll be huge for them. Um, I'm a big Kirby fan. Gosh, I'd really like to see him play all year, but, um, that's their biggest piece. Um, everything probably slots better. If he comes back into somewhat form and, you know, cause there's just a lot of Kirby hate out there. I'd like to see that. We love Kirby on this show. Yeah, so we are not brother supporters. So, but um, yeah, they've there's a whole lack of talent. Um, Hudson again comes in. It's a great addition, but it's not everything. Right, and your D is still going to be bloody awful, and you don't have any goaltending, so it's that's that's bad. Yeah. Um. Number seven, I have Buffalo. Holy cow, I have Buffalo. Are we just going to agree the whole time? I have a feeling we are. I remember you sent me your things, and I think we might actually be completely right on. Um, um, mainly, and I do think that it could potentially be tight between Buffalo and Ottawa. Um, I only give Ottawa the leg up because of acquiring Linus Allmark. I think even if they're still... I don't want to say bloody awful, but inconsistent. They have a better guy in front of the net. Um, and I think you still have, they're not the best pieces, but I think Ottawa has bigger and more talented pieces than Buffalo. I think Buffalo just truly, they have talented guys, but they just have less pieces compared to other teams in the division. Yeah, they, um, <laughs> You know, they were supposed to be knocking on the door for how long? And they're as still as long as I paid attention to hockey. <laughs> um, and they're still just knocking on the door. I mean, but you've you've got Tate Thompson who had a coming out party two years ago. You're Dylan Cousins, who you think is a really good ball player. Um, Alex Tuck, who should be doing more, and then that's it. Uh, I'll give Rasmus Dalin some credit. Well, you have three really good defensemen. You've got yeah. Bo Byron, you got Owen Powers, and Darlene. But 
you know, they're, um, I believe they just resigned Ufka, Pika, Mika, Slicka, Dika. Hey. You can say that. I think it's UPL is what they call them. UPL just signed. I mean, is that a difference goaltender though? I don't think so yet. So, um, again, just a lot of question marks, but you have three really good forwards and three really good defensemen. And with that, you're going to be second to last in the Atlantic. So, and I think it's, I think the Atlantic, the top is so competitive that I think it, not to, you know, shit on Buffalo or Ottawa or Montreal, because I do like the guys that they have on the roster, but the top of the Atlantic is so competitive that even if you had 50% of your roster of super talented guys, it's not enough in this division. Oh, heck no. Um, everybody's got a good amount of points that aren't going to be making the playoffs. Um, odds are good that you could get five teams from the Atlantic that make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, Detroit was tied for points with Washington. So that was the only reason that got split. So, um, yeah, it's um, you get beat up by those guys too. Yeah. But uh, it, it's just a big gap. You're correct. Yeah. Um, number six, I've got Ottawa. Um, I don't see them making the postseason, but like I said, I do think having Allmark in net definitely helps them because um, they've been very much struggling in terms of decent goaltending for that team. Um, they have pieces. You've got Brady. Um, you've got it's the Stutzel kid, I think. You've yes. got a couple of different guys. But I think similar to Buffalo, it's not enough. You have pieces, not to, you know, knock on the guys that are there in Ottawa. It's just simply not enough. Um, probably not. Again, I will go down stating that this is if you're looking for one surprise team, my money is on, it would be them. Um if Josh Norris comes back and is healthy. You have three stud centermen down the middle. You have Brady Kachuk. You have a good defense. Uh, maybe not a very good third pairing. But if Allmark plays like Allmark, and all of a sudden these guys get some confidence, hockey's a funny game, and they could breed off of him. Yeah. I mean, not breed, but they'll get a lot from him. So, um if there's any team that I think would move up, it would be them. <clears throat> but I also have them in third to last. Um, basically because I'm sick and tired of picking them higher and them constantly disappointing. But um, that's a very talented center group. And, you know, I gush over them with their center talent. Um, Brady, you know, they need to make some noise before Brady decides he don't want to be there no more. So. Um, five, and I'm happy to watch this team start to slip a little bit. Um, I got the Tampa Bay Lightning, possibly. Um, I don't see them making the postseason. Um, can't wait till we review this in February, and I'm just completely wrong. But I think with Stamkos gone, with Sergachev gone, um, with Janelle gone, you know, I even if they still play like Tampa later in the season, I think they'll definitely struggle at the beginning of the season because it takes a while, as Chicago has figured out, to find the locker room again when your key pieces are gone. When you you have guys that have been there for a very long time and they're all just gone, it takes a while. You don't just jump immediately into the same type of game because i mean stamkos is gone you're not the same locker room um so i don't have them completely slipping i think at the end of the day they're still going to be semi-competitive um but i you know see them being probably in detroit's position last year where they were 
tied, it went down to the last couple of games to see maybe if they make it into the postseason. Well, I uh, I do not have them slipping that much. I do have them slipping down. I've got them four. Um, and you're right, Stamkos will be difficult to replace. Um, in the locker room, but I got to figure that locker room is pretty tight to begin with. You have Victor Hedman, you have Kucherov, you have Brandon Point, and um, to replace Stamkos on the ice, you have Jake Getzel. I don't think you're losing much. You're probably gaining on five on five hockey. Um, JJ Mosier, who they got, is a top four defenseman. Um, so you know, getting rid of a uh, Sergeyev. How do you say his name? Sergeyev. I think was a gutsy move, but I think it could pay huge mm-hmm. dividends. You also got Geeky, who might make the team. Um, and Mosier's gonna be in your top four. You also got Ryan McDonough back. It's an old Ryan McDonough, but that's more locker room personnel. So, I thought I would have them slipping more, but I don't. So. Um, I don't think they drop off as much as you'd think. Um, I think they'll be. I don't still- think they're going to drop off a ton. They ended four at the end of last season. I only have them slipping a place. Yes, I don't have them slipping at all. So I figure they'll finish fourth again. More than I do. So, but um, um yeah, yeah, that's that's my take on uh on Tampa. I wouldn't. I wouldn't completely write them off for even higher. Um, depends on how Getzel fits along. And there's still a ton of weapons on that power play. Granted, you're going to miss oh, Stamkos' wow. shot, you know, on that side where, you know, once you pass it around a couple times, you put it to him and it's in the net. So, um, But they're still a very talented ball club. So that brings us to four. No, you never said who you have at five, Krusty. I got the Dead Wings at five. Um, you know, they've made some, the Dead Wings have made some good pickups. You know, you re signed Patty Kane, who was a definitely, he was going to be bringing them into the fight. I think Kane was rejuvenated with the attempt of making the playoffs. I mean, he loves that shit. Um, Tarasenko's. A very good third line player when he get the he gets the matchup he wants. Um, Lucas Raymond still has to continue to produce though. Uh, Edmondson will start to get top four defensive minutes, and I'm really curious to see how well he plays. But again, you're betting on Cam Talbot in that. I don't see how that works out for you. I mean, so between four and five, I have a choice between Vasilevsky or Cam Talbot. I'm going with Vasilevsky. So, who do you have it for? I got the Dead Wings because I will manifest that my boy Showtime goes back to the postseason this year. Um, And that's why I had to slot Tampa at five. And plus, Patty I can't I can ever have the Red Wings going into the playoffs. Patty Keene's going to the postseason. And I understand Vasilevsky is Vasilevsky, but I'm going to throw out the hat take that I do not think Vasilevsky is right now what he was when Tampa was consistently winning the Cup. And I don't think that he is the number one goaltender in the NHL currently. I think at a point he was, but I think right now you've got five ish that kind of flirt bounce around on that same tier level. Um, so yes, it's Vasilevsky versus Talbot. That's definitely the biggest thing against the dead wings. Um, but it's my show and I get to be petty and I'm not the biggest fan of the lightning. So they're going to be at five and I want showtime to go back to the postseason. Um, And I do, as much as I don't like the Dead Wings as a team, I do think that they have quite a few younger guys that have been playing well, like Krusty said, and I would like to see them continue to play well. Um, Because regardless of the team, I'm going to cheer for the young guys who are starting their 
you know, the beginning of their NHL career, unless they play for Nashville, because then I'm really petty. Yeah, they're just, that's a weird rebuild, because it's been going on forever. And I don't know what you have. When um, did you, time you have this rebuild to have started? Huh? When do you consider the rebuild to have started? Six years ago? Six, seven years ago? But you, I mean, you have what? You, you, you'd consider it at least six years ago. Okay. And from that, in your young talent, you have Lucas Raymond. And you have two defensemen. Right? You've got Snyder and Evanson who are really good. After that, you know, these are all older players. So. In I, Detroit right now. Yes. I would say I do believe that a decent amount of Detroit's talent that is coming up is sitting in Grand Rapids. Yeah. I, uh, let's uh, let's take a quick peek at that. Because um, Sebastian Cosa being one of them. Oh, yes, yes. They've got a goaltender who could be lights out. Yes. I, yeah, I think they have very few and far pieces up in the NHL scope right now. But I do think most of their plan, in quotation marks, is sitting in Grand Rapids or it's sitting at Michigan State. Yeah, and again, I, I look at even the Grand Rapids – and you're looking at like two or three guys, maybe at tops. So I don't know how this all comes together. Um, but again, your older players, you know, your Dylan Larkin, he's only 28, still has wheels. Cat is still just 26. Um, I like Andrew Cobb. So again, they're a team that needs to for like kind of gel together too. Yeah. So we'll see if it does. I just, I have no confidence in their goaltending. That's None fair. whatsoever. That's completely fair. Um, all right, moving on. Now we get to the big boys. Now we get to the big boys. Um, I have this team in number three. They could slip, um, but they're at number three, truly, because I do not see them going number one or number two. They could slip. Who knows? Tampa could skyrocket and they could slip. It could happen, but it's your Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, at the end of the day, it's the same. They're trudging out the same. I think it's going to be the same. I know it's exactly not, they're not exactly the same because Tyler Bertuzzi is no longer in Toronto, but it is the same. Shanahan is going to trudge out the same thing until. Matthews decides that he's had enough of it and he, you know, signs to be the next captain for the Los Angeles Kings or he's fired. It's the same. It's going to be the same for the season. It's going to be great. Austin Matthews is going to score an ungodly amount in November and December, and they will be golfing by May. Yeah, but, um, I also have the Leafs at number three. I saw also believe the Leafs' biggest addition doesn't step on the ice, but he'll be behind the bench. And they got a heck of a good coach. And Barube will get him playing their way, or else he'll start taking things from them. And he could care less if it's Austin Matthews or Nylander or any of them. I believe he's finally a coach that could get them to play postseason hockey during the regular season. And that's what that team has to do. I think they can play postseason during the regular season. I don't think that they can play postseason in the postseason. I think they can. I think I think they'll be able to. They've never played postseason hockey during the regular season ever. They go out, they try to outscore people. That's what they did. They try to add to people's points at the end of a game instead of holding a lead. 
that's a recipe for disaster once you get into the postseason because you don't know how to do it. And now you're telling them, no, 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 you need to lock it down. No, that needs to be instilled during the regular season. Barube will do that. He's going to have them playing heavier. They're a little bit of a bigger team. Again, defensively, does Tanev hold up? I don't know. Um, your other guys, Oliver Ekman Larson, you already know what he is. I mean, that's the number seven defenseman, really, who's got a little bit of offensive skill. So um, Stolars and Samsonov switch is about even. Yeah. So, But I, I think their biggest addition is behind the bench. But there's enough talent to easily be third, um, not even playing the right way, the way they've always played. So. Right. I'm interesting to see what Brew Bay does. It'll de- yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see. Um, all right, number two. Guys, I don't like it, but I have fear. Huh? I don't like it, what I'm about to say. But I have fear based on what they did during the during the offseason with free agency, who they signed. And who went away to have ridiculous contracts in Seattle? Number two, I have your Florida Panthers. They could be number one, but I don't think that they will be. Um, I think, you know, none of their big, big pieces went away, but I think a decent amount of their pieces. And also, I don't really understand some of their free agent signings. Um, aside from Mackenzie Entwistle, because we love Mac on this show. Um, and so I don't think they are exactly what they were this past June. Um, you know, if everyone else is kind of meh during the season, I think they could easily be number one. But I think if they're playing at 100%, and I think if Boston's playing at 100%, I do think Boston has the ability to be number one in the end as much as it pains for me. Yeah, I also have Florida at number two. Um, They'll be another interesting team to watch. Um, They've played a ton of hockey in the last two years. Yeah. Um, That that wears on you. Yeah. It's going to wear on Barkov. I'm guaranteed, well, it wears on Ekblad. Um, You know, you're talking huge minutes for two years straight. Um, you know, more is going to be asked out of, uh, goose. I'm sure he'll rise to the occasion, but you know, he's not used to be a complete vocal point. I think they have to watch their minutes. Um, but they're also a team that knows, Hey, we just got to get in. So it's not do or die during the regular season for them. So, um, yeah, they, they had to shed cap, so Reinhardt left, and Montour, you weren't matching that contract whatsoever. Um, but again, you have a great leader in Barkov and Matthew Kachuk that'll teach anybody coming in how to play the Florida way. But that's an exhausting style that they've been playing for two years. Um, does it continue? Sure it could. I, I, I watched Chicago play that way for three, four years in a row. Um, but it gets taxing on you. Mm-hmm. So um, I figure they slip to second. They could slip more. Again, it depends. I, Bob I'm played, you the delusional I'm, train and hoping, believe that they don't slip more. Than that. Yeah. Um, you're also asking a lot out of Bob to continue to play like he's been playing. But Everybody found out what it was like to underestimate Bob. So, but they'll be there. Yeah, never underestimate Bob. Um, and then number one, like I said, I do have Boston as the number one for the Atlantic Division. Could it be Florida? Sure. Could it be Toronto if Barubi really gets everybody's act together? Sure. But I think on paper, out of the gate, Boston's the best performing. You still have Swayman in front of the net who has shown, you know, the past couple of years, regular season and postseason, that he is that guy. He is 
that good. He can play that well consistently. I don't fear for Boston for that sense. Um, you know, have they lost a couple of pieces? Sure, but they still have a pretty dang good team. Um, I definitely think if Florida did not play like Florida did during the postseason, I think Boston could have gone even further um, during the playoffs. Um, I think it just came down to Bob versus Swayman at the end of the day. So, but I do, I think on paper, out of the gate, Boston's number one in the division. Yeah, I have Boston uh, also at number one. I, I think they're going to want it more during the regular season. Um, I do believe, at least for this year, Lindholm fits in very nicely with yeah. Pasta and um, Marshawn. You got Zadorov, who gives you a big thumper in the back end, and Charlie McEnvoy doesn't have to do all the thumping. I think Zadorov fits in perfectly for Boston's style of game, too. Yeah. So, um, granted, you lost to Allmark. Um, so, your big question mark is, okay, Swayman's now going to play two-thirds of the games. He's never done that in his career. Does it matter? I can't see why. <laughs> um, you know, he's going to know going into the camp he's getting at least two-thirds of the starts. Um, so, he already knows he's getting more of a workload. I think that should be a decent transact, uh, smooth transition. I think he'll be able to handle it. So, again, that's a team that constantly is reloading and retooling and staying relevant. Granted, they're not winning cups, but they're in the conversation. So, um, they got a great coach. They're just, again, when you get teams like them, like Florida, a coach has to do less. Everybody knows what's expected out of it. Right. And you can't really float through two games in a row on either of those ball clubs because you're going to hear about it from the leadership group and everybody else in the locker room. It just, it won't be accepted. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I got Boston as my top, top dog. Um, well, like we did last off season, we'll probably, you know, we still have plenty more divisions to talk about in the next coming weeks, but probably during four nations when crusty the old guy is going stir crazy because we don't have hockey for two weeks in the middle of February. We will look back on this and see where we right, where we wrong. Who knows? Maybe Montreal is number one in the division. That's not going to happen, but. If your listeners have ever figured out something, crusty old guy doesn't know what he's talking about half the time. So, uh, yeah, um, I will go down and probably state that I, I, I think the Atlantic's the toughest out of the four, though. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, at the end of the day, your top three are really good, and I believe your top four are really good. Yeah. So... I mean, you sit there and look at them. I conclude Tampa. That's four teams that could win the cup. I know. You could say Tampa sucks. Right, and I do often. But... They have Brandon Hagel, you know. I know. That's the exception. It still hurts, Kyle. I want my boy back. Um, no, I did know because I did the little quiz and I got a full breakdown on Apparently, how I feel about each team. Well, yeah. There's a lot of people who have Tampa hate, so. I think it's because I have so much Florida love that I got to hate the other side of the state. I can dig it. But, um, yeah, that's about it for the Atlantic. Again, you've got, you know, four teams that are going to struggle to find anything close to the playoffs and all four teams are improving. Yeah. So I will say, I think like you said, you've got the top four that are really good and the bottom four that are still doing their best. I do think potentially the biggest thing that we could see, I don't see any of the bottom four teams jumping to the top four, but I do think that potentially the gap between the two could close up a bit. Yeah, I could see that maybe happening. You get, you know, the Leafs struggle off the gate or whatever, 
and I could see Tampa struggling, sure. Um, again, I will put my money on if I if any of those bottom four it'll be Ottawa. Um, again, uh, you know they got Allmark. That that could be a game changer for that that team. Or I could just be repeating the same dribble I've repeated the last three years with Ottawa. Thank you, Ottawa. You just really like. I can't wait for you to see Ottawa this season because you just love them. Yes, but that'll be at the end of the year. So by that point, we'll just be so sick of watching Chicago lose. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm a. You know, I'll tell your listeners now. I'm going to start to drink the KD Kool Aid. I am going to be a glass half full kind of guy until the season starts. I am washing out the disgusting year that was last year. Um, that is, I'm going through a cleansing. It's it's a whole thing. Yoga's involved, meditation. There's a whole process that might be exhausting for your fans to really know about. So I won't go into it in detail. But I'm hoping by the next time we talk, you know, to be there a little bit more. And by the end of August, I should be completely ready. Yeah. Because uh, we're, we're going to be competitive. We're going to be good. There you go. That's it. Uh, yeah. You got anything else for this week? Any other thoughts, feelings? Want to talk about yoga? No, I don't want to talk. And I really don't do yoga. I'm, I'm, I'm a very tight person. I, I do meditate, but that's a struggle for me. Um, no, I don't think I got anything. I'm looking forward to uh for you to have your football guy on. I do need to switch gears. I have a fantasy football draft in I think like three or four weeks, and I haven't been paying attention to anything football wise. So. Yeah, just as a reminder to everybody, we are having uh, one of the guys from Comes and Fits, Windy City Sports Talk, on in a couple of weeks to talk football before the beginning of this football season. It should be really entertaining, you guys, because I don't know anything about football. Krusty does. I know nothing. Um, but he's going to be on in a couple of weeks. We'll have some bonus episodes with some familiar faces at the end of August um, while we go on a little tiny brief hiatus and I'm out of the country, but we will still have episodes. We'll just not be with new weekly information. Um, that is all for this week. Just as a reminder, make sure to hit that like and subscribe on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube, however you watch or listen to us ramble on a weekly basis. We will be back at it next week.